today we'll start with the topic scattering of light scattering is the process in which light ray after incidenting on the small particles or the particles of the size of the range of the wavelength of the light then the light scatters or it get diffused in all possible directions for example if we are taking the blue light coming when it incidents on a particle is very small or is the order of its wavelength then the light ray scatters in all possible directions this is the process of scattering of light now today we will see few criterions which belongs to this scattering of light first of all i'll go with the rayleigh's criterion of scattering lord rayleigh gave the criterion for the scattering of light which says it says that the scattering intensity if it is denoted by i then the scattering intensity of any wavelength will be proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength inversely according to this criterion we can easily understand that if lambda is more then the scattering we see that if lambda is more then the scattering intensity i is less or we can say if lambda is less the scattering intensity is high so this is the relationship between the scattering intensity and the wavelength of light now that implies that if we are talking about the seven colors of which the light is constituted and white light is consisted of seven wavelengths that we know and this uh, bend of seven colors or seven wavelengths is called abbreviation we take as vibgyor v for violet indigo blue green y orange and red respectively the colors assigned to the abbreviation vibgyor now as we know the lambda or the wavelength is maximum for the red color and it is minimum for the violet color so what we see what we observe when the particle is of the proper range that is of the range of the wavelength of the colors then we see that the intensity which is the scattering intensity is maximum for violet and minimum for red so from here we can have few very important conclusions and applications here first of all we can talk about danger signals are taken to be red it is so because when the red light or red cloth or any red object is taken its scattering is taken then its scattering does not take place that much prominently and it can be observed at the high distances so the person can observe the danger signal from a huge distance and that's why it is important to be an application of scattering of light i think it is clear then the next application or a simple phenomenon we can observe due to the scattering of light is the blue color of sky next point i am discussing is the blue color of sky as we live on the planet earth and on earth we know there is beautiful combination of gases in form of the blanket of atmosphere in which there are so many gases and these gases have some small fine particles suspended in it 
Due to these particles which are very fine or of very small range, what happens when the white light ray incidence on a particle? Then the most viable color which is able to get scattered is the violet one. So the violet scatters but as violet is in very small amount of the blend of seven colors so violet indigo are not observed and then we come to the blue the blue color intensity is the most observed one because our eyes are most sensitive to the blue color as red does not scatter because it is of higher wavelength that's why we observe our sky as the blue one students it is very important to understand that there is nothing like sky there is no screen which is blue in color but actually due to this process this important process of scattering due to the particles very fine particles present in the atmosphere we see the outer space as blue in color because it is very important to understand that if the atmosphere is not present or the atmosphere is absent we should be clear that if it is so then the sky or the space is observed to be black in color So this was the second application of this beautiful, interesting phenomenon related to light. Now, the another application is the white color of clouds. See, in the clouds, there are water droplets. And these water droplets are of considerable size. These are not very smaller like the dust particles. So, when we say that the dependence of scattering intensity on the fourth power of lambda inversely is valid when the particles are very small. If they are not small, then what happens? When the light ray incidence on the bigger particle, then the bigger particles scatter all the colors in different directions equally and that's why we just observe the cloud white in color now the another now the another application is of reddish appearance of sun and sunrise and sunset also beautiful phenomenon happens due to the scattering of light now again we are talking about the atmosphere and the earth is our earth and we have a blend or mixture of air around our planet surrounding our planet now what in this atmosphere as we know there are so many fine sized particles when the sun rises then the sun is giving us the energies and the wavelengths all wavelengths they are and the combination comes as what we say the white light ray as it is not white it is transparent now when the light ray comes in the morning time it has to travel the maximum distance to reach to the observer on the earth what happens the blue color the violet and the all different colors scatter in the midway but the red color the yellow color and the orangish color just remains as it is because these colors being of higher wavelength will not scatter much and that's why what we observe that our sun appears to be red in color and its nearby area is also looks to be red in color. So this is the reason why 
the sun appears reddish at the time of sunrise and sunset. Now, what happens to the sun's disk which we observe in the afternoon? Actually, at this time, as the sun rays has to travel the shorter distance, that's why the light does not scatter and we see the sun as whitish or bright plate in the noon. Sometimes we can say that this appearance may be of yellow color. It is because in the upper region the blue color scatters but the yellow remains and the appearance becomes yellowish. Now we are talking about the Tyndall effect. In Tyndall effect we know about the three types of solutions. The true solution in which the solute and solvent both are intermissible to each other at such an extent that we cannot find out or we cannot observe the particles uh, clearly. But the suspensions are those in which the solutes are of greater size. They are really greater size. And then we have the colloidal solutions. In colloidal solutions, we have the solute particles of 10 to the power minus 6 meter range. Now, in this particle, in this solution, because of colloidal particles' presence, as they are of the wavelength range of the light, that's why they can scatter the light. And we can observe the path of light due to its scattering to the different particles. This phenomenon is known as Tyndall effect because it was observed by the scientist in honor of him, it's known as the Tyndall effect. This phenomenon also based on the scattering of light. Now we have an important experimental verification of scattering. In this process, we have a tumbler. In the tumbler, we have 2 liter of clear water. And we have a source of light, which is a strong source of light with a strong intensity. Now, what we do, we put a convex lens in the path of light. As we know that if the source is placed at the focus of the convex lens, then the ray after incidenting on the convex lens, it will go on parallel to the principal axis of convex lens. And then we will see that here, when the water is considered the clear water, the light rays will pass and on the next side where we have a circular opening, through that circular opening the light ray will pass and then we have applied one more lens which is convex in nature to converge these light rays on a screen. Mn. Initially, what we observe that the rays which are coming through this clear water will see that a clear sharp image will be we will be observing, which is bright, very bright in nature. So this is the phenomenon which we observe. Now, what happens? We add some sodium thiosulfate in it, and we'll take its Concentration 200 gram in 2 liter water. When we put 2 to 3 milliliter concentrated sulfuric acid in it, reaction starts and the precipitation of sulfur crystal starts. After 2 or 3 minutes, what we observe? We observe that if it is observed from the other three sides, then the beaker comes to appear bluish in color but when we go through to the screen the image of this bright point or the convergence of the rays initially looks to be yellowish orangish and then its reddishness increases and after a while 
we observe it as crimson red in color. So this is the experimental verification of scattering of light by the chemical process and the physical concepts. Now we are discussing about the rainbow formation. For the rainbow we are taking a simple assumption. In this assumption we have observed that the observer and the sun if they are connected with a straight line then the rays coming from the sun we are taking coming to be parallel from the in the atmosphere. Now what happens when there is a rainy season and the water droplets are present the white light splits into its seven colors because of the different optical density of the medium and then we see that the light divides into its two colors. Now after being dispersed we see that one total internal reflection of the light rays takes place and it reaches to the observer in such a way that the violet color makes an angle of 40 degree and the red color makes an angle of 42 degree and all the color lies in this 2 degree gap. So in this way we get the construction of the primary rainbow in which the red color is at the outer extreme and the violet color is at the inner extreme. Now we can understand the phenomenon which happens behind the secondary rainbow. Secondary rainbow always comes with the primary rainbow and in this we are again assuming that the sun and the observer eye is in the same line. The light rays coming are taken to be parallel to this line and then we have again water droplet. Now this is an exaggerated diagram because the sun and the observer are denoted as point source and the water droplet because of uh, the need of the explanation of the phenomenon happen inside the raindrop. So it is important to show it bigger in size. So it can be assumed that the scale of the diagram can be manipulated according to the need. Now here what happens when the white light reaches to the raindrop it gets dispersed and again get distributed in the seven colors. These seven colors get total internally reflected like this. Once they get reflected and then they get second times reflected. In fact totally internal totally internally reflected they are and then we observe that this time the violet color comes out at the higher angle while the red color is at the lower angle. So this is our secondary rainbow formation. What is different in the secondary and primary rainbow is that here the violet color is on the outer extreme and the red color is in the inner extreme and because there are the two TIR is in the process that is two total internal reflection is in the process that's why there is more absorption of the light intensities and that's why it is fainter than the primary one that is one thing it is fainter second thing violet is an outer extreme and red is in inner extreme. Two TIR. So these are the major differences which differentiates the secondary rainbow from the primary rainbow. So these were the important 
and beautiful phenomenon which happens on the basis of the scattering of light or which can explain on the basis of the scattering process of 